Yo, yo. What's up? What's up? What is popping, y'all? Back in the building. We are live. Back in the building. Y'all, yeah. This your girl, Lady Free. And I'm your boy, Pastor J, man. We're here. We're here. We're here. And today. Another episode of Shift Real Talk Tuesdays. That's right. Shift Real Talk Tuesdays. We air every Tuesday. Eight nine o'clock, eight o'clock Central Standard Time. Yes, and and y'all, and y'all continue to keep us in your prayers as we continue to bring you the different content, you know, and you know as the show goes on, man, we're gonna have different hosts and you know a lot of things that we, we're planning. So y'all just keep us in your prayers and keep and we thank you for your support, man, just supporting us and supporting us. Keep supporting. Yes, and it's this is your first time. Watching us here on Shift Real Talk TV. This is Shift Real Talk Tuesdays. And listen, we want you to we want to make sure that you comment below. We want to talk back to you on this platform. Make sure that you subscribe, hit the little notification bell, and then make sure that you um give us a thumbs up. Yes, and we're coming live tonight. We're re- recording live tonight from W A. What is it again? Oh, Lord, please forgive me, Donnie. I don't have it in front of me. It's WBABC Radio Network. Yes, yes, yes. We're coming live tonight from the network. All right. So tonight, as always, we come to you with a hot topic. And tonight's hot topic is let's address the pain. I'm hurting and I can't get up. Man, there are so many people in this world today hurting for various reasons. So we're just going to have a conversation about it tonight. Let's address the pain, okay? I'm hurting and I can't wow, get up. Wow, and I can't get up. That's something. I, You know, I was um, talking with my, um, my wife a couple of days ago. And one thing about me and my wife, we really have, um, we have this great relationship where we talk about everything. And I was just... And, you know, letting her know that, man, there was a lot of relationships that I got in and a lot of people, not even just relationships, but a lot of people that, that I interacted with or a lot of people mm-hmm. that I, that I was in friendship with relationship, you know, um, situationship, you know, a lot of ships that I got involved in, right. there was a level of hurt, level of pain and certain things that they went through because it, it showed in their actions and it showed in their reactions how they reacted to certain things and a lot of times people's reactions they, they come from somewhere so today we kind of want to we want to have a conversation about, about yes. where this thing come from man we want to kind of like delve deep into this and i, I think this is going to be a good conversation yeah you know, as we as we tune in but we're going to get right into it so <clears throat> i do know one thing i do know one thing lady free i'm listening i do know one thing that for some reason in our society, um, there is a level of broken homes. And um, in the level of broken homes, and it's for some reason it happens in our community, I believe it's, it's, a, it's at like at an all-time high in our communities. Because if you go hmm. to the schools, if you go, if you talk to people in the street, you know, a lot of times they grew up in a broken home. So when you grow up in broken homes, what you have there is now two levels of information okay you know what i'm saying so you have the child in the middle you have a home over here and you have a home over here gotcha okay so you have two levels of information right. coming f- f- to this one child so in other words certain things like say for instance the child comes with the father you know the child will say well my mommy said i can't do this you know and it's like you know and vice versa the child goes with the mother well daddy said i can't do this right so there's a level of 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 information and the war comes in where we're fighting over what information is supposed to be received mm. you know what i'm saying we're right. fighting over that level of information right because now we don't want to look less than that person that, that we don't want to look less than our choice to be single Okay, wait, I didn't understand that. We don't want to look less than because we made the see the thing is we're giving this information and the, but the thing is we didn't really understand this information when we were together. So while we're not together, we don't want to look less than the failure or the experience that didn't work out. So we want to look at least positive in this role because we were not we were not successful in the relationship. You okay. understand what I'm saying? All right. So there's I a level I'm of following you. So so there's a level of I, well, at least I know what I'm saying when it comes to my child. 
know what I'm saying? Right. At least I know what I'm saying when I'm coming to my child. Right. Okay. So so we we deal with that, you know. And I I know even there, there was a situation, man. I've seen this happen. I've seen this happen. Um, you know, like prime example, like if the dad has to leave, um, you know, because again we're dealing with the broken home, and the dad has to leave. So the child is going, no, daddy don't leave, or daddy don't want to come with you, but he can't stay at the house because they're not together. Right. So this level of pain that comes with you leaving, you know, now the child dealing with, you know, dealing with being abandoned being or abandoned or rejected, you're rejected yeah. because of the fact that the, we, we couldn't make it together. Right. But so, so the thing is, and the Bible lets us know that it, you know, a lot of, a lot of relationships fail, not because of, um, of what we know, but it fails because of what we don't know. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So we don't really understand how to get into relationships. So do you think a lot of the level of pain that people are experiencing today, you, are you saying that it comes from that childhood first? Yeah, it comes, especially in the, especially, you know, because like I said, our community, we deal with broken homes. Right. That That's some, for some reason, that's a norm now. You know what I'm saying? And then a lot it of us are having now. kids, kids out of, we're not even together already. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We, we're not even together. But the thing, but here's the thing. A lot of us, and I say us, we grew up with, we grew up with trained behavior. Okay. In other words, like we, I, we were told, uh, wow, this is deep. We were told like when we were growing up, um, a, a man, a real man don't cry. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or if a, a real woman will, will fix your plate, you know what I'm saying? A real woman is supposed to fix a man's plate. So now what well, we do? Well, they didn't necessarily say for us real woman. They just said but, a woman. Yeah, well, yeah. a woman, a real, or you know, some right. some some people, some women put an extra emphasis on okay. a real woman. You know what I'm saying? Okay, well, I, I I'm because I don't date. Well, I'm a real woman because I fix my man plate. You know? Okay, gotcha, gotcha. I fix my man plate. Right. You got the, you know, say. So we grow up with these trained behaviors. So when we grow up with these trained behaviors, now what we do is we go into a relationship with expectations of what we've been trained to believe. Right. Oh, and rightfully so. Rightfully so. So now it's like, so now we'll, so there's an expectation of why we're with people instead of really understanding the level of love. Okay, let's go back though. Okay. Because you're talking about when you're first as children, you, because we're talking about let's address the pain. And when you, you, you made a statement, you was like, Okay, so there's two levels of information coming to this child at mm-hmm. one time. Yeah. You got what daddy says and what goes on in his house. And then you got what mama say and what goes on at her house. And when you come back to mama's house and what daddy say, you're not going to be able to do that because, you know, first of all, the reason why y'all not together is y'all couldn't get along in the first place. So you're not going to let your daddy information come and infiltrate what I'm yeah, doing over here in my exactly. house. So then it causes that child to become confused. Yes. It conflicted and mentally is where the battle begins in yes, our minds. Exactly. So as a child, when you have that confliction or how about this, you have a mother who is not allowing that man to to int- to be with that ch- um, father. That I'm sorry, mm. a mother who's not allowing the child to go and be in part of the, the the father's life. So the child is confused now because it's like, where's my daddy? Yeah, where's my daddy? Or when it, when God didn't even design it that way from the there beginning. There was no design like that. So that right there, let's start with that pain because I don't think people really understand how painful that is for a child to go through that. Mentally and emotionally, knowing that even if they've never seen their mother and their father together, let's say that they know somewhere in their nature that there is supposed to be a mother and a father mm-hmm. there. They know that there's supposed to be two a, a parent there that's supposed to nurture them, that's supposed to love on them, that's supposed to help mm-hmm. cultivate and grow them and and give them wisdom and all of that stuff all throughout their life. That's right. They know that. That's right. The pain comes in. How painful is that? Do we ever think about how painful it is for children to actually go through mm-hmm. that type of situation? That's true. That confusion, that that feeling rejected at a young age. Mm-hmm. Some of us can't even handle being rejected at a at an adult age. Exactly. Some of us can't handle the fact that they feel abandoned and who actually talks to these babies to help them understand it's not that. Let's talk about what it is. Okay, if this is what your dad says not to do at his house, baby, listen. Let's do this. 
Let's incorporate. I mean, if it's not a bad thing, let's incorporate it. If this is what you're learning, let's find a way to incorporate all of that into just your life. Because it's this child's life. It's not the two well, households. That's that's why I said even before then, we gotta go back. We get we gotta even go back. Because again, um this is why you, you gotta understand being together. Uh-huh. Now now if you're if you're married, you know, and you break up, you know, that's that's really not really understanding the purpose of relationship before you even get into it. So we got to even go before that broken home Mm -hmm. because again, that's why I was saying, you know, a lot of times we get into relationships and we get into them with an expectation. Right. We get into it without even the trained behavior that, you know, we, that we grew up, you know, learning or that we grew up and we learned. Right. So with this learned behavior that we either taught ourselves or it was given to us. It was taught to us, right. Or it was taught to us because, you know, I believe all behaviors learn. But the point is that, you know, when you get into situations, now you're getting into situations because of an expectation. Now, I love her. Now, prime example. So, I love you and there's no reason why I love you. Okay. I can't give a specific reason why I love you because Good. I don't love you because you do something for me. Good. I don't love you. I love you not because of, but in spite of. That's perfect. For you know me. what I'm saying? And and Thank this is God. how we get in the situation. Hey, y'all, um just a little quick shout out my dad is on. Mind provoking. Girl, you know I love you and miss you, girl. Kia Thompson, love you, love you, love you, love you. Hey, Deborah Henderson, Allie will be back on next week. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Definitely she'll be back on she's next week. Still a part of the she's crew. still a Definitely. part of us. She'll be back on. She'll be back with us next week. Yes, yes, we. She will be back with us. So, um, definitely, um, so definitely, um, uh, uh, so, so it's just it's important that we understand, you know, why, you know, we get with each other in the first place. Right. Because again, it's better to, to not make the commitment as, and, and, and enjoy being single right. as opposed to getting with somebody and you really don't understand the purpose, you know, and I heard Miles Monroe say, they said, if, if you get with somebody and they t- can tell you the reason why they love you, then you need to run. Because <laughs> that reason, well, if that, he's, I understand that. I, I heard him say something like that too. Because the thing is, if that reason changes, mm-hmm. if the reason you got with me is because of my shape, and then as I get older, my shape, yeah, changes, shape changes, then what would keep you there if that's the reason why you came? Yeah. You know? So, yeah, definitely. Um, with that being said, hey, Pop Jesse, Jesse, um, Pop on the line, Sonya Easterlin, we love you guys and thank you for watching. Okay, so. We talk about let's address the pain. And if you are on and you have comments as it pertains to just, you know, dealing with that, the broken home, dealing with growing up without a father or dealing with growing up in a household where you had a mother and a father and they were in different homes and you had to learn one thing over here and learn one thing over here as a child. We talk about the pain. Let's address the pain. So we want you to put in the comments different things that you've dealt with and different things that you've experienced growing up in that situation. Because I think it's very important for us to address this so that people will understand these children, they are dealing with more than we think. Because a lot of times people say, oh, you ain't dealing with nothing. You don't have no bills to pay. You, you don't have no light bill. You don't have no, you don't have no food bill, you know, and all that stuff. But to be honest, it's a lot more that kids are dealing with mentally today. And that's a lot of times where most of the pain starts in mm. childhood. It's it, it not from childhood. Um, you know, like, like, you know, it, and it's, it's so amazing that you say that because I, I believe even, even to be honest with you, sometimes even it, the home don't really have to be broken for you to deal with some, some situations in the home. That's you true. You know what I'm saying? But it, it, it's a lot of situations that I know that there was both parents in the house. That's true. But there was, and there was still, you know, certain words that were saying because our words give life. Right. You know what I'm saying? So or we saying that. certain things to our kids that don't push them to do better right. or, or don't encourage them. You know, certain things that we say, you know, it it, it is it, it can either damage or or or, or destroy. Yep. Because <laughs> our words give life. They give life. And, pe- and that's a misperception that people have. 
that when you have a mother and a father in the home, that everything is perfect. Well, at least you had your mom. And at least you had your mom and well, daddy. The yeah. thing is, I was raised with a mother and a father, and I I love my mother and my father. They are definitely great parents. However, there are some things that in the household, even with the mother and a father, mm -hmm. um, you go through. Yeah, you definitely go through things as. You listening to your mom and your father seeing your mother and your father interact, having to deal with at times you may see them disagree or uh, it's a lot of stuff that you may go through in the household with the mother and the father. Okay, so right now we have mind provoking. She says my mom was dad and mom. Wow. It taught me that anyone can be parents, yet there are plenty of people that don't have the capacity to be called mom or dad. Yeah, oh, got you. Mm, got okay. You. Sonia, she says, I used to feel neglected because my father was not in the house. Although I had gr a, a great f father figure around me, I still felt the void. Yes. And that void is where a pain loves to hide. And, and, and too, like I said, in that broken home, the absenteeism, it, it, it causes a level of pain mm -hmm. because, you, you know, saying it, it's just that absenteeism. And then to have to see that parent leave, My with, you know, what I'm saying because because, of, you know, the mom and the dad, they can't get along anyway. So you the one of the parents that you don't live with has to leave that le actual leaving. It, it, it really damaged the kids that have to sit there in the middle. And like we said in yep. the beginning, you know, saying you're caught in between two levels of information, two opinions, two yeah. levels of information. Yeah. So, but, the, and this is not to go on a not to certain people who had to, who had to do it by themselves. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so this, this is, this no is not a, not, this people. is not, not a slight to people, you know what I'm saying? Because that had, had that did it, it by itself, but some people do it by themselves because this is their choice because they're carrying a level of pain that they feel like the pain that they're carrying they're going to protect their child and they, you know what I'm saying? And whatever they went through with the other parent, that is a, that is a, a depiction on something that's wrong. So you make a choice to keep that parent away from the child, which is also still bad. <laughs> it is because at the same time, you don't know how great of a parent that person may be. Yes. They may not be a good boyfriend. They may not have been a good husband, but that does girlfriend. not mean... We're talking about fathers. Oh well, I'm talking you. from I'm, I'm talking from the st standpoint of fathers. They may not be a good father. They may not. I mean, a, a good husband or a good um, boyfriend, but they could very well be the best father any child could ask for. And then with Pastor Jay just said, they may not be a good girlfriend. They may not have even been a good wife. But that does not mean that they would not be a good mother yes we yes. have to give people an opportunity to grow in that role because there is no handbook on this and then what happens is we get into relationships and when we get into relationships what happens everything that we learn from the re first relationship that was supposed to teach us how to be in a healthy relationship everything we learn the brokenness like sonya says the neglect the, the fact that, like, um, Mind Provoking says that she had the thought that anybody can be, um, I mean, everybody can't be considered mom and dad. All of these things carry with you in your bag into the relationships you're in. And now the pain that you felt as a child gets either added to or picked at or triggered in these relationships. Yes. So let's talk the, about these relationships. The, the, yeah. So, so the point, so here's the thing, like I said, some of us get in relationships because of, because of, all right, you are, you look nice, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, um, you, you, if, and then, then there's an expectation. Well, if I do something for you, I expect you to return and do back That's something that for me. That's obligation. That's right. That's, that's be, you know, obligation. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so we feel like that there's a level of obligation. But the point is, we get into some of these relationships with our level of love. Right. With the way that we believe love portrays. And that level of love comes with an expectation. And when you get into relationships for expectation, then when those expectations are not met, then now you say, I didn't expect it to turn out like this. Right. So now you get into <laughs> resentment. Now so now you you're into, into resentment. Yeah. Anger. Now you're into all of these negative feelings that come along with the fact that your expectations were not met. And now here we are with the whole no do, another level of pain. Do you know the responsibility that comes in with meeting somebody else's expectation? Pressure. That is a that is a girl a child, child, child pressure. 
Child, please. <laughs> that's a lot of pressure because the that person, is what? that's the person that you created in your head. Come on. And, <laughs> and man, let me tell you something. When you have that expectation of the person that you want to be with, and you have made that person in your head what you feel like that you need or you want, and the people that come, you may have met some amazing people, but because they did not meet the expectation, What's it up, causes it to seem like that person is not a good person or that person has, has let you down and, and you being let down, that hurts because I remember when I was young, my dad used to let me down yeah. like that. Let me, let me share with David. Hey, Dave, what's up, bro? Love you, man. I miss Dave. you. Dave. Dave said, my mom and dad were separated and he was never there. Even though my mom was there all the time, I still wanted, I still wanted to, f I was still wanted to feel from my dad. He still wanted to feel wanted. Oh, still wanted dad. from his dad. And because I was neglected from my dad, I sometimes ne neglect my kids. But I'm getting better communication with my kids now. Oh, Dave, thanks That's for sharing that. So transparent. That is, that is so transparent, bro. That's a transparent moment. Man. And and like I said, a lot of times, you know, a lot of a lot of these relationships that really don't don't work out the way we expect them to is because we don't have the information. And the Bible lets us know that that the, our people, my people, they perish because the of the of lack of knowledge. And and because know. we don't know certain things. You know, even our parents, some things they did not know. They didn't know. So, you know, and sometimes we hold our parents for things that we think they should have known, but they didn't. Devil those expectations. They, you know, another level of expectation. I it's think some, that's the first time we've had expectations is when we've had expectations against our parents and what we feel like they did not do and what they didn't give yeah. us. But they just didn't know. I heard somebody that I heard somebody today. Oh my God. One of my clients. And I, I experienced this all the time with my client. My client was telling me, um, that, well, I'm paying for this haircut. And I was like, no, you get, you only 16. Like your mother sent you in here, you know, but so your mom, my mom broke. And I was like, no, you don't, I, I got offended that he said that because I'm like, dude, you know what I'm saying? You don't, but you paying for a haircut, but your mother's paying rent. Your mother's feeding you. Your mother's right. doing all this. So you really don't even understand what parents go through to have to maintain. And especially that a single parent that's doing it by themselves. Right. I got offended behind that. Oh, my mom, bro. She ain't got no money. That's why I'm working. But li listen, you learning some responsibility. But you ain't even paying half the bills that your mother is probably struggling to pay. And then what happens? We get in relationships with people who have this level of respect for their own parent they own mom and then all of a sudden we wonder why they don't respect us because a lot of times we get into relationships with people that are in pain we don't know what kind of pain they dealt with as a child we don't know what kind of pain they went through in old relationships because we don't really talk like we should in these relationships mm -hmm. to get the data as you date your dating means to collect data and so as we grow into these relationships and we decide to be more involved in everything we don't get the data we need to get and then we wonder why later we claiming that this person hurt us we 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 going through we saying our pickle broke we going through stuff that we should not be going through because we did not do the homework we needed to do. And I'm not saying necessarily go and Google the person. I'm just saying just getting to know that person. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you can understand what kind of pain they've been through. And either you could be that person that you may have what it takes to help them through it. So that they can be healed from it. And sometimes you can see it as a thing of, okay, I think you cool and everything. But you're not the person for me. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of times too, we become the product of the very thing that we've missed. Hmm. We become we become a product of that, and and a lot like if there's a level of absenteeism, then we become that, right? Because we think we think so much that. And, and I was telling this to a friend of mine. You know, you know, it's nothing wrong with you know doing everything that you got to do to provide, but. Provision is nothing if you don't spend the time with your kid. If you don't spend the time, it's a lot of things that right. I sacrifice. You know, I didn't go on the road. I didn't talk. I stopped touring on the road because if I known I would have did that, then what that would have mentally did to me would made me keep needing the tour to, 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 to feel like I needed that to take care of my child. 
you know what I'm saying, or to beat it, but it was nothing better than the memories that I created with my kid. You know what I'm saying? The football games, the the, the basketball games, and, you know, sacrificing it. And a lot of times I didn't know how I was going to pay for right. it. But God, for some reason, he made a way. Every every fee that I needed to be paid, you know what I'm saying? Even when I had to work, there were parents that would say, hey, I'm going to take Zion a day, or I'm going to take them, you know what I'm saying, Denzel a day, and you go do what you need to do, and they'll be all right, I'll feed them. And, and I'm like, man, they got no money. Don't even worry about it. And it was like, man, you know. Yeah. As opposed to, you know, saying that, and I, and I, and the thing is, I knew how that would affect him, but you know, to turn around in the stands and to see everybody else's dad there but and to he, not, and to yeah. not see me, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That, it, that would have just kind of drove me crazy. Like, wow, I can't, I'm sorry. No, you're good. You're good. Because I, I definitely understand that. And when, like what Dave said, I think that was so transparent what he taught, what he said, because he became, like you just said, yeah, the product yeah, yeah. of his, of what his father did, but he recognizes that now. And because he recognizes that he said he's getting better and his children, it's never too late. His children are going to love him. Yes, for that. That's right. And then at some point I pray that his children will take up the mantle from where he's starting right now exactly. and go into their relationships, knowing that they have to be present. Exactly. Because that's one thing that needs to happen when you're in pain, you need to be present in that moment. Come and on here. You lady need free to be present to be able to feel the pain that you're feeling inside. And once you are present and you acknowledge the pain that you're actually feeling inside, then you could come face to face with it. Sometimes you have to sit in the pain that you're going through after which you also have to. And I, and I got this from, um, I don't know the psychiatrist, the, the therapist name, but it, it resonated with me because he said, after you sit with the pain that you're going through inside, don't be imbalanced. Pay attention also to what's going on outside because your pain only stretches as far as the skin that you're in. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we don't realize that that's as far as our pain stretches. So everything else around us, we act as though that stuff does not matter. But when you take a look, when you really look around, even when you're in pain, you can actually see a lot of things that will make you feel better. Like in the mornings when I'm driving to work, I see a orange sun that lights up the sky. And the sky is so beautifully orange. If I'm having a bad morning, guess what? When I see that, it's like, wow. God always give us little glimpses of his glory so that we could take those glimpses and use those glimpses to help us not focus so much on the pain at all times and have other things to focus on. We just have to open our eyes and pay attention to it. You, you know, it's amazing about God. You know, um, he cares for us. Mm -hmm. And with him caring for us, what he is, is our need. He is our need. He is our need. Yeah. So, so the thing is when, when you re really wow. are, 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 are getting over pain or really trying to help somebody get out of pain, it's like, you got to know that person and know what they need to give them what they need before right. the need even becomes available. Got to prepare them for so it. So you got to even Bring them the need, like they made prime example. I'll give an example. Okay. Like you tell me, babe, I didn't feel like you, I didn't like the way you did this because it made me feel uh, a certain way. The way that, okay. So that means there's a need that you have for me that I need to help you get over whatever what I did or whatever I could do or if I keep doing this and before I keep doing it, it may cause a level of either trigger the pain that you went through or you know what I'm saying or it could. Uh, magnify something that may be magnify. a little small. Come on so it, it's my job to immediately give you that need today. So that's why it's a for me to just stop it so that you don't go into a level of pain because I realize there's levels to it. There's, there's a, you it know what I'm saying? It could just be something that's, that, that's a, a thing in the moment and we talk about it and help me if I'm, tell me, let me know if I'm wrong. You saying basically, if I say something to you in the moment, it's a, it's it's not as painful. Yeah, it may be something that hurt me, mm. but it's not as painful. And if you address that and help me to yeah. help that need to be met with help what you to have That's to right. do in order to That's meet right. that need, then it won't grow to another level of pain, another mm -hmm. level. If you decide to just off me, yeah, you decide to just because you know, if you brush because me if you understand because if you understand even as kids, the reason why 
um, it, 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 it became too pain because sometimes like, but for, first of all, is the process to it. Because if you hit my arm at the minute that you hit it, it may not be, you know, it may not swell up. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, but so it, it'll hurt. But it, it, after a while, if, uh, if, if it's not addressed, it'll swell up or it'll cut. But so it, that's the next level of pain because to deal with an open wound, you, didn't deal with it. you know what I'm saying? When you didn't deal with it. So yeah. the point is a lot of times when we do things, what we do is we set that, that pace or we set the precedence of either it could be something that could hurt us or it could be something that could heal. You know what I'm saying? So that's why leaving and not coming back or leave, just leaving period, you know what I'm saying? Or, 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 or or doing certain things that will plant the seed of, of the, 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 the abandonment or plant the seed of, and you know what I'm saying? And if you have to leave, the only way to do it is to bend down to that child and say, hey, man, I'm, I got to leave you right now, but I'll be back. And reassure that child they're not being abandoned. Exactly. You have to address that. I'll be back. You, you have to, exactly. And if you do don't, certain, then what happens? You, you create a level of pain that they have There's to deal levels with. to it. Lasagna says, I had to forgive my parents because I used to say they didn't love me enough to try to try for me. I thank God daily for my parents. I had to grow up and understand that nothing in life is perfect. Nothing in life is perfect. That's right. Kim Scott, hey, girl. That's my girl. Kim on the line. And Kenya hey. Marriott. It's on the line. They are my watching. My Aunt Doris is on the line. Y'all, so, hey. so let's address this. She, wait, let me read my Aunt Doris okay, stuff Aunt now. Doris. She said, yeah, she said, when you do not spend time with your children, it can cause, hold on, it can cause them to change. Ask what's going on with them. You can see change in your children. Address it then. Exactly. That's why we're saying it's important to address it. It's not, you know, you cannot leave it. You have to become the need meter. You have to meet the need. We have yeah. to, that's why I said we have to even carry that characteristic or the spirit of God that he's yeah. placed inside of us. And what, and that's that love. That love covers a multitude of everything. Of um, It covers everything. Yeah, it covers so we have everything. to become that love. So that means we have to either know the people that we around know the people that we're getting with know the people that we you know what I'm saying even knowing our kids no, knowing them you got to really and, and and to be honest with you our kids are some some of our kids are a product of our feelings Right. Or some of our kids are the product of our love. Come on. <laughs> feelings or love. Pick the feelings. One. Are, they're, they're, trust Pick me, there one. is a big difference. There is. There's a big difference. A, a product of how I was feeling at this time or a product of somebody that I truly was in love with in spite of and and, and we did it the right way. But it, it, either way you do it, there's still, you have to be that, that, that parent that, that does not raise your kid in the middle of brokenness. In the middle of two opinions, because the way God set it up was the fact that He gave the information. He gave the information to the man, he to, gave Adam. His word to Adam. He yeah. gave His word to Adam, and that word was for Adam to use to cultivate the family. So to protect and so, all of that. Yes. Yeah, so if it's coming from two from a broken situation, then then you're confusing the kid, giving him all of this information that's opinionated or. And, and like I said, don't don't please don't take me wrong because yeah, you know like I'm, I said I'm definitely a single mom. Yes, I, you I are. Raised, and you I raised, raised a, my and, son. Yes, and as that's a my single son mom. Too. So we're not talking against what you have to do. If this is something that you have to do, we understand that. But see, there's a thing that you have to do as well as a person who knows that these children are absorbing everything and adapting to everything that hey, they're Kenya. giving in their household. So if you know that this, you and this parent don't get along and he comes to drop the child off and the child cries and all that stuff, take your feelings and put them aside. It's not about the fact that this child loved the him more than or her more than he, they love you. It's about you and that parent both deciding at that moment, this child is more important than the way we feel about each other. So then you address the issue. Hey Amen. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, baby. Your daddy's going to come back, you know, and make that child priority because although we may have been um, raised in a situation that caused us pain, we should be able to see that pain that we've lived lived in remember it and then decide not to cause our children to go through that kind of pain because yes. then they'll grow up dealing with a lot of the issues that we dealt with and we know those issues are some issues we wish that we didn't have to deal with yes hey, as adults hey deborah henderson thank you thank you for your comment thank you we love you we thank you thank you thank you amen 
Thank you, Deborah Henderson. Okay, so check it out, y'all. Oh, Kenya Mirror said, Mine's was love because God used my womb. Okay. Say it again. I, I, Wait, I didn't. She I said didn't hers. I, you know, get hers. Her kid was uh, conceived out of love because God used her womb. God. Okay, I love that. I love I raised that. my children by myself. Amen. And I'm sure you did a great job because you came from a stock of women who 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 are very who are very uh uh, uh strong in the Lord. And I'm sure that their, their principles was, was, I know their principles were given to you. So you, you had the tools that you needed. And, and what we were saying, this is how a lot of relationships fail. Come on. And it's not just a boyfriend and girlfriend or a marriage situation. It's a child and parents relationship. Right. A lot of times relation, these relationships fail because we don't have the information. We don't have the information. So that this is, this is what we're saying is, is this is what we trying to trying to establish here that we get, the tools that we need. We you cannot it. fix a car and you don't have the information on how to fix it. You can't, you know That's what I'm saying? Right. You can't, you can't fix anything and you don't have the information to even ex execute what you need to execute. Right. So you got to have the information for it to work. So therefore what we talking about today, Keisha scooters on the line. We love oh, you guys. We sorry. So I'm so sorry. We missed y'all man. When y'all was here. I know that was awesome that y'all came. Um, so listen, the thing is we're talking about let's address the pain. So what we we going we we have to address the pain in our children first. A lot of the things that our children deal with. And then from that we have to m make sure we understand that when we get into our relationships on our jobs when we get into relationships in the community, when we get into relationships in our households, even the parent child relationship, we have to remember that sometimes when people are are um, acting out or responding or reacting that it, a lot of times it's coming from pain. And if you're the person that loves that person or that child, then at some point you have to say, okay, what can I do to help you address this pain so we could get some healing started because it's never too late to begin the healing process. She's, can you say we have to forgive ourselves as parents because we didn't know. And that's where the pain came from. Exactly. That's right. That's exactly. We said that we earlier. Kenya. We didn't know. And, and, and the thing is, even as us as kids, we've held our parents. We said this earlier that we've held our parents to standard about what they probably didn't know. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of things came to us and we expected certain things because of an expectation that we didn't, that we held them to a level of our expectation. A standard, right. And, and that they, was wrong. They're our parents. So we think that that's the way it's supposed to be. But see, um, and, and I like what you said, King. She said, our pains were not addressed as children. So that is a learning process. And the thing is, as long as you're alive, you can learn. As long as you're alive, you can learn. It is a learning process. Think about what you went through as a child. Think we about fall down, but we get up. <laughs> I knew at some point we was gonna have a break. But a sanity. All right, baby. Okay, all right, all right. I hear you. All right. I'm not Donnie McCorkin, so I, I hear mean, you. I don't own that hit right. But so <laughs> so at some point we have to pay attention, not just to the pain we went through. We have to pay attention to okay, what are our children going through today? Our children are crying out. They're lashing out. Our children are being disrespectful. Some of it because of the pain that we've experienced ourselves. And we don't even realize that we've taught our children how to respond to our pain. And the only time, way you can really respond to pain in the in, in the way that they know as children is to act out. You, you, know, what's so, uh, uh, you know what's so amazing? Well, I wouldn't even say it's amazing because to see this, it, it really bothers me. And, and it's so, because, um, a lot of times when, when we don't forgive ourselves and we've become parents, because a lot of times we really don't even understand, like I said, what our parents go through until we become right. parents ourselves. So even as parents, what we do now is we won't even, we become our kids friends at, even right. when they are two years old. Hey, little buddy. Uh, uh, uh. And if they're not, and, and our way to discipline them is to reward them. You know what I'm saying? So and it, so we reward them when we really should be teaching them certain things. So I see it all the time. It'd be kids that come in the barbershop, and when I say they, yeah, and the mama and the daddy is just holding them while this kid, there's no way that I wouldn't have to sit, I would not be allowed to sit. And I, well, it was no way that my mama or my daddy would have 
you know, I would have acted a fool in the barbershop in front of all these people and not be able to get a haircut like I was getting a shot or something. You know what I'm saying? But I see it happen all the time. These, these parents, well, if you if you sit still, Bobby, I'll give you a lollipop. If you sit still, uh, uh, Ray Ray, uh, I'll make sure I'll take you to get some ice cream. Take, take him to get some ice cream? No. Teach him how to sit there and get a haircut. I don't, I don't understand it. It is, it is, it is so why, why, uh, why do this level of pain affect how we uh, should, should raise our kids? The Bible says that train up a child in the way they right. should go to when, so when they get old, they will not depart from it. So if you, if you get allowing him to not even learn how to sit, I had to sit in church for five hours I, and, I, and I bet not had got up. Better not get up. You better you better sit there till if you gotta go to go to the bathroom and come right back. My and I use that because I didn't really have to use the bathroom. I just didn't want to sit there that long. And, and Michael Walker <laughs> said that's called negative reinforcement. Because what I mean, some, wow. some kids, yes. some, when when they got whoopings when they was little, some of them probably they warranted. I'm not talking about kids that got beat. I'm talking about people that have got disciplined by whooping from their parents growing up. They say, I ain't never whooping my kids. There's a balance in how we discipline our kids. You don't have to beat them half to death. You don't have to do that. If you choose not to, okay, you're going to have to do something with that gum. I don't know. It tastes I good right now. I did so good <laughs> this whole time. It tastes good, too. It's so sugary. You popping and, and <laughs> chewing It's hard. so sugary. It's so sugary. <laughs> it's so sugary. Anyway, honey. So at the end of the day, <laughs> it's sugary. You know, yeah. it ain't even dry. It's that long lasting gun. You know, that double mint. <laughs> I get it. It's that double mint. I get it's it. It's double, double sugary. See? But what okay. we, what we have to do at some point, y'all, we have to address the issues. My cousin on here, Tanisha. We have to teach accountability, teach responsibility so that these children will not be imbalanced. Because when we were growing up, if certain things happened to us, we say, I'll never do that to my child, but find the balance in it. Find the, the healthy, the happy medium in it. And the core of everything that we should be teaching our children, the core of every relationship we get in, the core of everything has to be something solid. Yes. And the solid that is I so. have found to work for me in my parenting and in my relationships and in my um, career is God. That's the only Come on. consistent. Come on, free. That's, everybody say consistent, free. be consistent. But the only consistency I've ever found was God. He said, I'm the same today, yesterday, today, and forever. While everything else around us is changing, I will never change. When, when, when people's views and beliefs and about everything that God created change, he says, but I never changed the way I believe yes. about it. Let, let's be honest. Do y'all really believe, do you really believe that there is a level of discipline that has been taken out of the home and now giving in, into the hands of, of society to give you now the information that you need to raise our kids? Do you really? What do you mean? Okay. Meaning say, like, say meaning again. like, well, my mama, my grandma, my, my great grandmother, you know, they, the government didn't have to tell them, you know, saying that you know, they, they didn't have to, cause they made me pick out the switch on the tree. And I think, <laughs> they see, made me pick the switch out. They made me pick the switch out on the tree. And it was like, I tried to pick the smallest one of my grand, uh -uh, that's not the one, uh -uh, that one over there. Uh -uh, no, that's. <laughs> But see, I think, I and then think, when they took the took the leaves off, it was like that little swat. Yep. You know, I had to like pluck with everyone up, but it was just that easy. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, and you finna get it. You get ready one. to get it. But now, now the 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 society has been given the 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 uh, given the reins to tell us how we need to help raise our kids. And half the time, the people that's telling us how to raise the children, when you look at their children, their children may or may not be the ones to um, yes. be the example for you to raise your kids behind. Hey, Tanisha, we miss you, girl. Tanisha says the structure has, com has confirmed to conform to a public or, or socio standard. Yes. yes, they created a standard for us. And it's almost my, like it's whatever my grandmama the people didn't say. Even, they did. 
No. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I was I was out of high out of high school. I was I graduated already. I'm I'm figuring life out, you know what I'm saying, as a young man. And and because like I said, there were certain things that I really didn't know. I had to I was really dependent and I had a type of uh, attachment behavior that was dependent on somebody helping me. Mm. That was my behavior. That was my attachment behavior. I was dependent on being helped. Wow. Because my mama helped me till it was, she couldn't help me no, until it hurt her. She helped me until it hurt her. Yeah. So my attachment style behavior was dependent on being helped. I didn't, I wasn't even smart enough to go get it for myself. I was dependent on somebody doing it. But one thing my grandmother didn't do because there was times where I really didn't have nowhere to go. And I would call my grandmother like, Hey, can I, can I come stay with you for a while? My grandma said, you can come stay. But in the morning <laughs> you need to find out what you're going to do. But the point is she didn't tell me she, I mean, and, and I thank God for her for that to this day, because now I have the attitude that I, if, if, if the thing was just to get that hard, I still would figure it out. Try to, I thank God things ain't that hard. I really thank God that things ain't hard. But you had to but, learn how to But the figure point is I had to learn how to figure it out and I had to get rid of that behavior attachment that I had on being helped all the time. Yeah. So because I was feeling that way, I was entitled with everybody that I got with. I expected that everybody that I got with, it was your job to help me. Wow. Yeah. And, I, and I'm thinking about it, like, wow, that's what I did. That's how I really dealt with a lot of stuff when it came to me getting where I needed to get to. I got with people that I knew could help me. And you know what? The thing that's like to your question, a lot of times today in society, what they have done is everybody has an opinion as to how you are to raise your child. I remember back in the day, it used to be this phrase in my house. It's like, I don't care what your friend's doing. Yeah. I'm not their mama. Because in my house, this is what we do. And it was it, it was no, like I said, there's no handbook, no, no book that tells you how to raise each individual child with each individual personality. As a parent, it's your job to get to know your children enough to raise them and give them what they need. But now, if you try to do anything that society deems is bad, wrong to them, then they will make sure they have a say-so in how you raise your children. Right. And I think a lot of times... We have given up the control of raising our children and the authority of raising our households to society for fear that if we don't do it the way people think or if we in public and we know that that child acting up and we grab them by the arm and do that little pinch thing underneath the meat of their skin and they cry out, now somebody finna call the people or take a picture or, or, or put you on Instagram or something, almost as if you're abusing the child. And it's like we have given over our authority to like, um, who was this? Tanisha said to a socio standard of what parenting is. That's right. And that's not what the word of God says. Yes. There is a standard. He ra He said, I will lift up a standard. There's a standard that we are supposed to have when it comes to raising our children so that they, when they get older, they will not depart from those things. Yeah, our parents didn't know it all, but I can almost guarantee you it's some things that your parents taught you that has saved you in many situations as an adult. Kenya said, I did that to my oldest, and now it hurts me to let him go through his process as a grown male yes you gotta let him go through his pro you gotta cut the umbilical yeah, cord you gotta cut it it might hurt it, it's gonna hurt a because, little yeah, bit because but what you're creating is a dependency on him always getting with somebody because i did it i was dependent on people helping me until like it was like I would get mad if they wouldn't help me, and it was like how the My heck goodness. you gonna get mad right. because you you not in a position to help yourself? Wow, yeah, <laughs> but, um, but that's what we do. Tanisha says yes. That's why we always have to consider the pathology of our behaviors. There's a root cause to everything. You are absolutely right, and some of those roots need to be plucked up out of the ground and thrown into the sea so they can never take root again. Because they're not helping us. Um, she says, um, Keisha. Scoot, that's Scoot. That's Scoot. Okay, Scooter says the church was a beacon in the community. Somewhere along the line, we as people have become culturally obsessed and become spiritually 
malnourished Malnutri- scooter. That's right. That's right. That's right. The church yeah. was a beacon, and a beacon is the light. It's like the lighthouse. It's like if you know, if you didn't know any other way to go to keep from crashing in turbulence on the sea in the storm, you knew you can go towards that light, and that light will help you find your way. And that's what the church was supposed to be for people, whether it was marriage, whether it was childbirth, whether it was raising your children, no matter what it was. I, I I totally agree, Scooter. Man, I missed. I miss, but man, we got to catch up, Scoot. I say the same thing, but I'm clear that we have open, respectful communication because I never want them to feel suppressed. Um, suppressed in this country where fragility is a trend. The spirit of fear. I shall. Oh, I, I shy away. I shy from. away from. Yes. Yes, that's so true, man. The true mothers are gone, and it seems as we don't know what to do. We never knew what to do. Yeah, we never knew what we to do. We went on they what figured we, it out as yeah, they we went along. Yeah, we figured it out. And the thing is, we figured it out for our children because who knows our children better than us? I, and I, we, we had to figure it out. We don't even have that look no more. Yeah, I remember that look. You would just have to give your kid that one look. And they knew. And they knew. To oh, get let me in sit line. Down. I know I did. <laughs> but I you, know I nowadays did. you get that kid that look, they giving it right back they to you. They give it right back to you. <laughs> right. And then you, to keep from being and, and we think it's public, cute. You laugh. And yeah, uh, yeah, he's so cute. Look, he, girl, I guess he told me. See, I don't yeah. think sometimes they think it's cute. I think sometimes just to keep from being embarrassed. No, that, it's not embarrassing to them because it's their kid. Well, not, baby, we can't talk for everybody. Now, oh, I, I, I know some. Trust me, we know some well, parents. Being that we don't know everybody in this whole <laughs> okay, entire world, okay. I'm sure there's some people who do who laugh out of just feeling embarrassed, and so they keep to save face. They uh, because, laugh it off uh, because you, my, my mother, my mother was one thing she would tell me on the way to church and in, in the car on the way to church. Don't you, you better not, don't you embarrass me. I'm telling you now because if you embarrass me. Oh, you gonna be the one that get embarrassed? But see, they, they they weren't empty threats back in, back then. Don't you? They do were you. promises. It's not a threat. Yes, it's a promise. yes, yeah. But today, you say that, then that child will look at you like, okay, yeah. and take that phone out and start recording you. What you say, Mama? What you say you gonna do to me? <laughs> I, oh, oh, ooh, ooh, let take a phone out and record me. I'm gonna give you something to record. I'm gonna give it to you to record. And guess what? While you recording, you hit the door. But you know what? <laughs> and that, record this kick and out. That recording always <laughs> looks worse than what it is. Oh, psh, no, it ain't got it because it is what it is. But you, there's no way you. I mean, because at the end of the day, that that you, at, at the end of the day, we can't allow. And, and 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 listen, y'all. Our time is going, man. We just thank y'all, man. The people we miss a lot of y'all. But at the end of the day, listen. There there has to be a level of of of, of honor that's given because honor. guess what? No matter what 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 goes on, no matter what your parent is, no matter what you feel your parent is, no matter what you think your parent ain't, no matter what you think your parent should be, no matter what your parent ain't. The the Bible says, honor your mother and father, honor. that your days may be long upon this land. That's so right. the point is that they, they, no matter what. They're still, uh, you know, and, and this is why we even have to give it to them because we understand we have to give them this respect to to know that they have to be respectful. So we had to let them, so we can't Same let them be still. disrespectful because what we're doing is now we're allowing them to disobey what it says in the word. And think about that. That's the only scripture in the word of God that teaches us that Honor. if we do that, it, we will have long life on this earth. If I didn't take anything else serious, I took that verse, that scripture very serious because I love my child enough yes. to help them. That's right. Have a long life on this earth. That's right. And, and not even <laughs> just a long life, a long life. Come that on, God. God says That's right. He Come will on. Give you. Tanisha, you're right. Tanisha said, you remember my grandma, my Gma saying, I'm going to give you something to cry for. <laughs> it never made sense to me. No, my, 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 my mama used to tell me. This gonna hurt you more than it hurt me. It's gonna hurt me more than it hurt you. And I didn't understand it. What well, I'm the one. Sometimes it do though. Yeah, but it does. Yeah. Because you hurt to do it. You but you really gotta want do it. To, but yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing. A lot of times parents say they don't want to do it and they don't do it. Sometimes <laughs> you just gotta know, okay, and you might have to say that, look, this gonna hurt me 
yeah. more than it's going to hurt you. But, but at the same time, we have to teach them, like Pastor Jay says, that level of honor. There's a level of honor that we're missing. If you really love right. your child, wouldn't you want your child to have long life on this earth? And that's a gift that God says he'll give to them. He give good gifts. So for me, I know that that's what I teach. Yes. Honor your mother. Don't take that and throw that out. That's so right. if you're that's a right. parent that's teaching your child to dishonor the other parent, then you have to be careful because you really don't know what you're doing. That's right. But 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 um, you're right. That that Kenya said that. Let us not forget that there is instructions for the parents as well. Yes, your your, your right. job as the parents is to train and to teach. And it and says, do not provoke your children to wrath. To wrath, that's right, exactly. Don't provoke your children to get angry and then get <clears> mad <throat> because they don't respect and honor you. Now that's wrong in itself. So, so. Th this this topic, man, I did. Y'all tune in with us. We got Ali Two Two Real coming back with us next week. But we're segueing into a very ish, a very so common sensitive topic, very sensitive and common topic. Yeah, a lot of these fathers out there are on child support for the wrong reason. For the wrong reason. For the wrong reason, and we're gonna deal with this next week. We bring in some, we bring in some reinforcements on the show next right. week, and and, and we're gonna we're gonna tackle this. We're gonna tackle this. And we're talk gonna, real. We're we gonna talk real, and we're gonna keep talk it one hundred. Child support. Yeah, we're gonna talk about it because there there's some fathers out there because of this pain. Because of this pain, there's some people that are that are locked into the system right. for no reason at all. And and they're in and out of jail because they can't afford to pay the you know what I'm saying and spend time at the same time. Right. So so with this, this so the system is controlling even our involvement in our kids' life. And there is a level of pain that some of these parents, the the custodial parents are dealing with that's causing it to be more difficult for the absent parents who desire to be there. Now we're I'm gonna put this disclaimer out here today. We're not speaking for every situation. So there may be some situations that you know that are totally different from the ones yes, we're going to yes, speak about. Yes. But what we're speaking about next week is child support. And it's coming from a real place, from real people with real child support issues. And we're giving you real solutions. Man, Kit, Sonia said, you still give them that look. That's right. Give them that look. Just, yeah, you have to. Give and them if you that get look. that look back, you got to give them that. that, that, that then you got to make the look a little more reinforcing. <laughs> look like that again. <laughs> make that look a little more enforcing. If that that look, because sometimes I'm telling you, these kids nowadays they looking back. But so you got to. But anyway, I, I, listen, y'all. Thank y'all for supporting today, man. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all, man. We love so y'all, man. Scooter. Lakeisha, man, we missed y'all. Kenya, thank you, Aunt Doris. Kia Lasagna, is on the line. Did we give Kia. a shout out to my baby? Yes, Kia. we did. I said it earlier we love in the show. You, Mumu. Yes, um, Doris, Aunt Dar, Tanisha, my cousin, I miss you, girl. You know what I'm saying? Um, 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 my niece, uh, uh, um, mind provoking, man. We love you. We love you. I miss you guys, man. I don't, Kim Scott, man. We just want to thank everybody that turned tuned in. And if and, we did and not next say week, anything about you, Pop Jesse, we love my, my you. My dad is on the line. If we did not and call of course, your name, I'll put your name in the chat and, so we'll know that you And of course, y'all, we want to deal with this. Of course, everybody, where, where's Ali at today? Listen, y'all, Ali's going to be back next week. Well, we got a topic. We're segueing into that. So listen, y'all, it's okay. You know what I'm saying? We still had a good time. We, we trust me, today, we this show, no matter who's on this show, is going to have some good content. If you have the mindset to listen to good content, you know what I'm saying? Because God is the is the center of this of this show. And without him, we would this it wouldn't listen, be no, no real talk. We have to remember this too. This is a ministry. Nobody gets the glory on this platform but God. This is a ministry where God has given us, he has given Pastor Jay a vision to bring his message forth in a way, in a real way where people will understand it. So we're going to be talking about relationships. We're going to be talking about um, life. We're going to be talking about love. But at the end of the day, we were given a charge and that's what God has given us to do. And we will be obedient to that mission. And we, and if we, we have one person watching and one person says, I want to be different. That helped me. That changed my life. Then that is what our and, desire and is. We want to also tell you guys out there in Radio Land because we are definitely being, we're on radio tonight. W A W B A B C Radio. W B A B C. W A B C Radio.com. 
We are we are on live with yeah, them tonight. God is so, doing some amazing so so things. listen, y'all who are tuning in in Radio Land, um, Donald B, thank you, man, for 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 tuning in with us tonight. So those of you who are Radio Land, y'all keep listening, um, keep listening and keep tuning in every Tuesday, eight o'clock, nine o'clock Central Time, nine o'clock, um, eight o'clock Central Standard yeah. Central Standard Time, Central Standard Time. We listen, love you so much. We thank y'all. I'm your boy. Pastor J. I'm your girl, Lady Free. And until next Tuesday. And until Tuesday, next Tuesday, y'all. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to share and subscribe. Let everybody know that Shift Real Talk Tuesdays is here. Until next time. Peace. Thanks for watching. <laughs>